Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Welcome back to the Juice Box. In today's video, we're taking a look at this guy. The HTRC Smart Battery Charger, capable of charging lead acid, lithium ion, and lithium iron phosphate batteries. Is this cheap little charger worth it? Does it work? Is it a fire hazard? Let's find out. This is the HTRC Smart Battery Charger, a seven stage automatic battery charger suitable for use with lithium ion, lead acid, and lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is a 12 volt or 24 volt battery charger and will pump out 10 amps at 12 volts and five amps at 24 volts for charging. This battery charger is rated at 85% or greater in efficiency and being a smart charger will not overcharge or cook your batteries if left connected and powered on. This battery charger has a built-in repair mode, however that is only compatible with lead acid batteries for vehicles, RVs, ATVs, and batteries of the similar composition. As always, there are links to this product and other tools and things that I use on the juice box in the video description below. Overall, it's a pretty small, concise package. Here on the back is some more detailed labels. On the right side, you've got your output to the battery. On the left side, you have your input from US Grid, 110 volts, as well as a little built-in cooling fan. Otherwise, that's it. Pretty basic little guy. Last thing in the box here is your instruction manual. So let's go ahead and get this thing plugged up, connected, and start charging our battery, which is a lithium iron phosphate. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy connected up. Not very difficult, right? We just take our extremely long power cord, plug it in here to the left side of the charger, making sure we have a good firm connection. And then this other end, we plug into our wall or our own personal grid if we have such luxuries. Once the power is connected, you will hear it one single beep and the LCD screen will show you it is off indicating it is not currently connected to a battery. We can also see down here at the bottom what mode it is in by default. You can change that by pressing this button here. It's currently on lithium ion. That is lead. And the last one there is what I want. This is the lithium iron phosphate setting. So let's go ahead and hook up our alligator clamps right here to the other side of the charger. And then we're gonna connect it over here to our lithium iron phosphate battery and see this guy start charging, at least. We hope it does. Hook the red one to the positive side. One thing I note here, not a lot of length, so I guess we'll hook them here in the middle. Make sure it seats well. And then over here on the wall, I'm gonna turn on the power to the charger itself. We have our one little beep. It tells me it's off. I'm gonna go ahead and choose mode. Put it on lithium iron phosphate. It's now analyzing the battery. You guys are seeing the LCD screen and it is very dark. That is true to reality. It is just as dark in person for me as you're seeing it on camera. Over at the left, there's a little sequential battery icon showing that it's charging, almost like it's filling it up. It's a little animation style thing. And then in the center of the LCD, it is cycling through rather quickly a handful of different data points. One thing shows me that it is currently charging at 9.9 .9 amps. The charger's temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. The battery voltage is currently at 11.7 volts. And that last one there cho shows me that it has pumped a total of 0.3 amp hours through the charger and into the battery. At this point, all we can do is let it sit back, charge the battery, and check on it periodically.
Well guys, a handful of days have passed since I first started this little charger's journey on charging my 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And that's because it took a while. That battery was absolutely dead. It was straight out of the box, was reading four volts, its internal BMS had gone to sleep. And so that was probably a really good test of, is this true? It would take a very long time to charge 100 amp hours with this little 10 amp charger. And yes, it does take a while. I lost count at total runtime at about 15 hours. Once it reached that point, I quit keeping track. As I would be out here, I would charge it. But since this is a new charger and I was not familiar with it, I never left it unattended. I did not want to burn down the juice box. Would not have been good for anyone. So that's why it took, I think about three days overall, off and on while I'm out here working as I'm close by watching it to let it charge up. That being said, it did charge up, and once it was full, it did automatically turn off the charger. That was awesome to see. As far as internal temperatures, this thing did get toasty. I think the hottest temperature reading on the display that I saw was somewhere around 48 degrees Celsius. That is the internal temperature. It's not the temperature of the case itself or anything. That's a pretty hot temperature, but this unit never got too hot to touch and never got so hot that I was concerned that it was a fire hazard or would damage any of the surfaces around it. So that is good to see. Obviously, it's something this small and compact, you're not gonna have a whole lot of room for heat sinks and airflow. So heat buildup that transfers out to the case is pretty inevitable with a charger design such as this. So overall, the things I like about this charger, it is small, lightweight, it is affordable, and it works as advertised. Things I don't like, that LCD display is super dark and nearly impossible to read, especially if you are outdoors in direct sunlight. Good luck with that. The power cord is long enough to reach from the charger to your outlet without needing to be really close to the outlet source, so that is nice. And the included alligator clips are sturdy and feel robust as well. The other thing I like about this charger is it has a standard XT60 plug on the side, and that would be awesome if you want to wire up several different batteries with XT60 plugs on the ends of those and just move the charger from battery to battery as you need to either top them off, recharge them, or repair them. That is a really cool feature. You're not locked in with just the charger and its own charging leads. You can kind of get modular with this, and that's a pretty neat feature. Overall, I think this is a good deal, a good buy. This was an affordable charger. It is not super powerful at 10 amps, but it does work. And as long as you're willing to devote enough time, we'll charge your 100 amp battery no problem. If you guys got any questions or comments, you know what to do. If you also like this kind of stuff, you're interested in off-grid DIY solar, wind power, energy production, and storage, that is what the juice box is all about. Definitely subscribe, stick around, and if you have ideas or questions for other content, leave me a comment down below. Take care as always, and I'll see you guys next time in the juice box.